Hey you guys, so I wanted to uh, really hone in on some sensory recipes and ideas this year, especially as I have a toddler preschooler at home again. And honestly, they're one of the most popular posts on my blog at survivingateacherssalary.com. Um, my most popular posts are always my sensory posts. And I really love uh, salt dough recipes because they're so cheap and they're so easy and you can pre-make things. There's a lot that you can do with salt dough recipes. But a lot of the posts that I see out there are for uh, holiday ornaments, which is great for holiday time, but there's only so many ornaments you can make year round. So I've been working on some new ideas, some creative ideas. I've also um, colored these with a couple different mediums so that you guys can see the, the coloring here that I wanted to share with you. Um, before I show you some of the different projects we have, I wanted to show you some of the colors and what they look like so that you can decide how you want your, uh, your crafts to look. So my favorite, my personal favorite as an adult is the acrylic paint because it's so bold you can see it's nice and smooth here, uh, really nice dark colors, but obviously with younger kids you don't want it. Um, I do find that sometimes they put, if you use washable paint, they use a lot of it. And if it's a water based and they put too much on it, you can have a little problems with your salt dough softening. Um, which is, which can be a problem if you use watercolors too. Uh, this is some watercolor, so they're more pastel. They do go on well. You just need to make sure the kids aren't adding too much water. Um, the only thing I'd say with these is this yellowish color you see here in the middle, it's actually a green, and it's actually in the watercolor palette around the same color as this green. So if you want a darker color, you really need to use the darkest colors that you can in the watercolor thing. Um, obviously, if it's younger kids, they probably don't care. They're just excited it's colors. But here is one of the, the lighter blues, which again is a similar shade on the palette as this dark blue. Um, so then I went to a darker watercolor. You can kind of see on the fringe edges here. Um, I will show you on the watercolor thing. So, it's backwards on the computer. This is the one that turned up looking yellow. It's kind of an olive green. Um, so I switched to this darker shade and that turned out much better. Um, but again, just make sure that they're not using too much water because that can soften the salt dough. Um, and the other thing that I tried was markers. I tried Sharpie markers because that's what I had on hand. And they do, they work well for boldness color, but you can see that there is a, a lot of spacing in there that the markers can't get into because it's just a marker and it doesn't seep down in there. Um, the only problem I found with the markers is that if you have salt dough, you can see this is a little bit rough here. This is not the smooth side. The markers do catch a little bit on those bumps, so it can make it a little bit more difficult or frustrating to color. Um, and for these recipes, they worked really easy. I used um, a cup of salt, two cups of flour, and one cup of water. And I just mixed it and kneaded it together. I added more flour if it was a little wet or sticky. And then I baked them for two hours at 200 degrees Fahrenheit in the oven. Now, for the fun part, I did come up with one uh, salt dough Christmas project. However, you can use this for other projects year round and I've, and I've partially done it. I have not finished any of these projects because uh, these I'm actually working on for my blog and I'll have better pictures and posts up throughout the year. Um, but the first, first little things I cut out here are gingerbread men. Um, and these are great. Everybody loves gingerbread men at Christmas. Teachers can use it in the classroom even if they can't celebrate holidays. Um, and so what I actually did with these gingerbread men is I just used a gingerbread men cookie cutter. And these little holes you kind of see mushed in here. Uh, you can use a toothpick, you can use a little pumpkin cutter, a sharp tip of a pencil, knife, whatever you want to do. And put uh, two holes kind of in the belly area. So that after you bake them, you can string them on some ribbon. You can see here that I thread the ribbon. I didn't bother cutting it off yet. But you can thread the ribbon in here and you can make a gingerbread banner. The only thing I'd say is you, you see that it does lean a little bit. Um, so your little gingerbread men may lean, especially if you put the holes a little further down. But this is a super fun way. You can do this and put this around your Christmas tree. The other thing that you can do with these gingerbread men is, um, actually not for Christmas, but you can do multicultural projects with these. And you can ha use felt, ribbon, uh, coloring, you can use beads to glue on, anything you want. 
and you can create uh, cultural costumes for them and learn about different parts of the world and the different areas, um, different beliefs and symbols and way that people make clothes and dye their clothes. It's a really great project for kids that's hands-on. Um, so these are the gingerbread men. You can turn them into banners with those little holes. Now, um, one project I'm working on, which actually isn't exciting because I don't have it done yet, but uh, one thing you can do with just a plain circle, uh, circle dough is um, make an earth out of them. You can do um, just the blue and green splotches on there for Earth Day, which is kind of fun. I've seen that a lot. Uh, one of my favorites, and I'm not done with it yet because I'm really hoping to have a wow post on my blog about it, but you take the same circle, the same circle um, salt dough guys, and you poke, I got two different ones here, you poke little holes in the top. You see there's different holes. It doesn't matter how many there are, but the idea with these little tiny holes is that you thread yarn in them and make hair. So these can turn into book characters. These can turn into, uh, I'd say self-portraits. It's not really a portrait, but uh, this can turn into yourself. You know, here's a little guy. If he has red hair, you can put yellow for blonde hair, black for black hair. Um, you can add googly eyes on them. I have not glued mine on yet. You can add googly eyes on them. They cute. You can, uh, you can, before you add the yarn on, you can paint it with different skin colors. It can be a multicultural project. There's a zillion things that you can do with this. And these are so fun. I mean, they could be as silly as here's a little leprechaun. Um, but these are great, especially book characters. I love that. And these are great for book report visuals too, especially if your child has a book report in class, um, in school that they're working on. These are super fun and they're hands-on project for that. Uh, let's see. Um, another idea is if you've got a child into Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, these circles are fabulous for that. You can even turn these circles into, um, into math flashcards, hands-on tactile flashcards, and you can glue beads uh, or pipe cleaners for the numbers. You can do it with letters. You can match uppercase and lowercase letters. I mean, there's just a zillion things that you can do with these. And they, they really store pretty good just because by the time that you bake them dry, they're pretty, they're pretty solid. Um, and then the one other, th one other salt to dough creation that I have been working on, which is really fun, is these hands. These hand cookie cutters I got from Oriental Trading, and they sent me, I don't have them here with me, but uh, they had different sizes. I used the biggest ones just because the fingers are so slim. Um, you can trace your own hand in the salt to dough that you have and cut it out with a knife. It does end up tending to be a little bit more uh, jagged unless you have an adult that's really got a steady hand. And obviously if you have a classroom full of children, that's just near impossible to actually do. So you can pre-cut these out with a hand-shaped cookie cutter at home and pre-bake them and then bring them and then let the kids sign them, they can put a fingerprint on them, they can paint them. Um, you can use these for multicultural projects and, uh, and differences projects and have hands of all different colors joining. There's so many things that you can do with this. I mean, I guess if you really want to, you could put a little tiny picture of um, a child in here if you're giving out gifts in class. Um, or you can take the same cookie cutter and you can kind of stretch the hands a little bit. You can twist them up a little and and you can then make Halloween projects with these spooky hands. Um, so that's kind of fun project to do. But those are just some uh, really quick and simple ideas that you can do for salt dough projects throughout the year. I have seen um, with the raw dough, the raw salt dough, cut out like this, you can have the child um, make animal tracks in them, pine cone tracks, you can roll sticks in them, all sorts of textures and shapes. Uh, it's really fun for dinosaur birthday parties and have little dinosaur feet tracked and then they cook while the kids are at the party. Um, you can even take this salt dough and wrap it up around a toy and then let it harden as long as you don't melt the toy in the oven. Um, you can just put it on low and let it slowly dry and harden and then have a, a, a pretty firm dig kit which is kind of fun for kids to play with their little hammers and, and knock toys out of. Um, 
And then the only other idea that I had really thought of, and I haven't done it yet, but was I was going to make a few extra of these discs so that they are flat. And then in the summer, as we go outside out on our hiking, and we have like a little forest out here behind our house, um, collect uh, acorns and little twigs and moss and create little tiny bird nests, not with acorns, but create little tiny bird nests on top of these. And then they're little, uh, you can use them for uh, dioramas and things for school and put a little fake birdie in them. Be a fun nature project for the kids to make. So that is just a few ideas and a really short, quick amount of time that you can do for your classroom, your, uh, if you're homeschooling, you got preschoolers at home, uh, you can make them fancy and give them out as gifts yourself. There's a lot of things that you can do with these um, birthday parties. Make a bunch of these little discs and, and put paw prints or dog bones to hide. I mean, there's just a zillion ideas. So if you have any other ideas that you've done with your salt dough creations that are not Christmas ornaments, I would love to hear about it. So make sure you leave a comment and um, maybe this has given you some new ideas and I'd love to see if you have some new ideas for the hands or these little faces. Um, I bet you could even put these on sticks and use them as little masks for a puppet theater. So there you go guys. Thanks so much for checking it out.